Welcome back to Matter of Fact. In 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court ended racial segregation in schools with Brown versus the Board of Education. But seven years earlier, a federal circuit court in California ruled that school segregation was unconstitutional. The California case, Mendez versus Westminster, focused on Mexican-American children denied access to white schools. Seven-year-old Sylvia Mendez was at the center of that case. Now she's 85 years old and reflects on her place in history. We sent Matter of Fact correspondent Laura Chavez to meet the woman who helped pave the way for integrated schools. Oh my God, I see myself. <laughs> Sylvia Mendez may seem like any other Hispanic grandmother, but behind that smile is a woman who changed history. My name is Sylvia Mendez, daughter of Gonzalo and Felicitas Mendez. Sylvia was the little girl at the center of Mendez versus Westminster a little-known case that paved the way for integrated schools before Brown versus Board of Education. In 1945, Sylvia's father, Gonzalo Mendez, asked her aunt Sally to enroll her and her brothers in a school just down the road. My aunt Sally went up to the clerk and she said, uh, you can't leave these children here. She says, why not? Because we don't take Mexicans here. These are the older kids in the Mexican school. At the time, schools in California were segregated and dark-skinned children with Hispanic last names weren't allowed at the 17th Street Elementary. That school was just for white students. Gonzalo, Jeronimo, Alicia, and Virginia and I would have to walk into the barrio to go to the Mexican school. So this is where you would walk? And this is where the school used to be, right here. Sylvia's father went to the school administration, but everyone gave him the same answer. No Mexicans allowed. Gonzalo then recruited four families, one from each school district in the county, to join the fight. The Mendez family then put up their own money and hired attorney David Marcus, who had just won a case to integrate public swimming pools. And he just won that case with the 14th Amendment, and it's in the Los Angeles Times. Once the Mendez family hired a lawyer, the school board made Gonzalo and Felicitas an offer, drop the case, and Sylvia and her brothers could go to the white school. But the Mendez family knew this wasn't just about their kids anymore. It was about the quality of education for all children, like these students, also at Hoover Elementary, the Mexican school. So talk to me about some of the differences between what they taught at the white school and the Mexican school. Well, in the Mexican school, they were trying to teach you how to speak English, even though we already spoke English, and how to take care of a house, and how to cook because they figured, you know, well, they'll end up being maids, you know. They weren't teaching us, you know, academics, like reading, writing, arithmetic. The Mendez's attorney argued the case based on the 14th Amendment, which guarantees equal treatment for all U.S. citizens. After a two-week court battle, Judge McCormick said, separate is not equal. The first time that had been spoken, separate is not equal, and they won the first case. The school board appealed the decision all the way to the California Supreme Court. And in the end, the court ruled in favor of the Mendez family. Shortly after, the governor of California, Earl Warren, signed a law prohibiting segregation in all public schools, five years before Brown versus Board of Education was decided. I received that one in Mexico City. Sylvia has received dozens of awards and honors for her work and the work of her parents, including the Medal of Freedom in 2011. But the honor she's most excited about is the one in her hometown, the Mendez Tribute Park. Still under construction will be a reminder of her family's legacy. This is a beautiful space. It is. Their win meant that Sylvia did go to the white school. She graduated and became a nurse. Ooh, that's when you graduated. That was when I graduated. This story struck a chord with me because of my own family's journey. In the early 1950s, my grandparents took a leap of faith and brought my father and his siblings to the U.S. from Mexico in the hope of giving their kids and future generations the best education available. My dad was actually the first one to graduate college of his immediate family, and it was such an accomplishment for my grandparents to see this happen because it wouldn't have happened without them being brave enough to cross over into the U.S., but it also wouldn't have happened if you weren't brave enough to walk in those doors. It wasn't me, it was my parents. I'm a storyteller, telling the story 
of Mintus versus Westminster, part of my history. In Westminster, California, I'm Laura Chavez. 